You are the judge, judges of the facts, the credibility of the witnesses, and the weight of the evidence. You may consider the appearance and manner of the witnesses on the stand, their intelligence, their opportunity for knowing the truth and for having observed the things about which they testified, their interest in the outcome of the case, their bias, and if any have been shown, their prior inconsistent statements, or whether they have knowingly testified untruthfully as to any material fact in the case. You may not arbitrarily disregard believable testimony of a witness. However, after you have considered all the evidence in the case, then you may accept or discard all or part of the testimony of a witness as you think proper. You are entitled to use your common sense in judging any testimony. From these things and all the other circumstances of the case, you may determine which witnesses are more believable and weigh their testimony accordingly. You must not base your verdict in any way upon sympathy, bias, guesswork, or speculation. Your verdict must be based solely upon the evidence and instructions of the court. Your verdict must be based on the facts as you find them and on the law contained in all of these instructions. With respect to Plaintiff John C. Depp II's claims against Defendant Amber Laura Hurd, the issues in this case are summarized below. Number one, whether Ms. Hurd made or published any of the following statements. A, Amber Hurd, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath that has to change. B, then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. C, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Number two, do any of Ms. Hurd's statements imply or insinuate anything about Mr. Depp? Number three, were Ms. Hurd's statements seen by anyone other than Mr. Depp? Number four, did Ms. Hurd's statements convey a defamatory implication to someone who saw them other than Mr. Depp? Number five, are the implications or insinuations about Mr. Depp in Ms. Hurd's statements false? Number six, did Ms. Hurd make the statements with actual malice? Number seven, if Mr. Depp is entitled to recover, what is the amount of Mr. Depp's damages? On these issues, Mr. Depp has the burden of proof. Your decisions on these issues must be governed by the instructions that follow.